The Apple Watch SE, second generation, by far is the best value Apple Watch currently available in the market due to the fact that it has the same ships as it's found on even on the most expensive Apple Watch like the Apple Watch Ultra and the Series 8. So it performs 100% identical among those more expensive models. So for an entry level model, I'm gonna go ahead and show you everything you can do with an Apple Watch SE 2. Everything from A all the way to Z. So this is the complete list of everything you could do with this Apple Watch. Let's go ahead and get started. Starting off with, let's understand the gestures. So the digital crown, not only is a great way to navigate, you could actually use the haptic feedback to dial in the exact position you wanted to let go of the digital crown. But by double tapping, this will actually take you back to the previously open app and vice versa. Then the power button, if you tap once, this will open app switcher. And then if you like to force quit an app, launch the app, hold down the power button until you get to this menu, and then tap and hold the digital crown. This will force close the app. Another method is you can actually open up app switcher and slide your finger like so, tap X, and this will also close the app. It's more efficient if you do the force close though. Now dot icon, if it's red, that just means you have notifications. And to view your notifications, just slide your finger down like so. This will also bring it up. And if you scroll all the way up, you could clear it all right here. And you always have access to the notification and the control center by just long pressing. You'll have access to both. Simply just pressing and holding right here. And in the control center, if you tap on the yellow icon, it will actually specify which what each icon is telling you. But first, I'd like to give a special thanks and shout out to SyncSong for not just sponsoring today's video, but also allowing us to check out their latest project. If you're like me, who accidentally always misplaces their wallet and the air tag is a little bit too bulky for you, definitely need to check out their Find My compatible card tag that they have right here. As this very thin credit card device it literally just slides in any pocket that you have space inside your wallet. And just like the AirTag, you can actually utilize the Find My app to locate this, to always monitor the last known location, to be notified in case you leave it, leave it back, and play sound so you can locate it faster. Then the card can also find your device, so it works vice versa. It is IPX68, so it's water and dust resistant, and can last up to six months under a single charge. So, not bad. An amazing device, especially if you're like me who always constantly misplaces their wallet. This accessory will definitely allow you to fi always find your wallet or at least be aware of its last known location at all times. Find out more about this product in the video description down below. Let's go ahead and resume. In the control center, you'll find a lot of amazing shortcuts that'll make your life so much easier. One of which is to find my phone capability, which if you tap here, this little phone icon, it'll play a pin sound on your iPhone. And if you tap and hold, this will toggle the flash. The Wi-Fi, you can actually long press on it, and this will actually allow you to quickly select a Wi-Fi network right here, in case you don't have an LTE Apple Watch. The battery life percentage, if you tap here, this is where you actually have access to the low power mode. When you enable low power mode, this will actually allow the Apple Watch to last longer than 18 hours and you'll still be able to operate the Apple Watch just fine. Then next to that is the flashlight. It'll just brighten your screen to its max nits brightness. If you slide your finger, you have different modes to select from and just tap the digital crown to get out of that. And then here you have your silent and unsilent theater mode. With theater mode enabled, if you take your palm and cover your Apple Watch like so, the Apple Watch screen will quickly turn off. And if you use the digital crown, you can take a quick peek without disturbing others around, which is why it's called theater mode. You can actually view your display in the theater. Then your water lock mode is right here. When this is enabled, the whole screen is unresponsive until you tap and hold the digital crown. And this will play a sound that will eject the liquids or anything that's inside the microphone and the speaker. So you should still be able to use your Apple Watch afterwards. And then airplane mode, this will basically allow you to toggle the airplane mode on both your devices, your iPhone and the Apple Watch. There's a setting you could adjust to prevent that from happening if you want to do it individually. And then here's your AirDrop. This is where you can actually select between many different AirPods you may have, as well as connect to another Bluetooth device as there is built-in Bluetooth on the Apple Watch. You can manually pair a Bluetooth device here and you can also pair a keyboard somehow as well. And if you keep scrolling down, this is where you'll find your Do Not Disturb modes as well as many different modes you may have on your device. And then next to that is school time mode. With school time mode enabled, basically it will just make a dummy version of your smartwatch to a traditional watch where you can see your clock and the date. And to get out of this, you just long press on the digital crown. It's gonna ask for a confirmation, tap exit, 
and there you go. It's basically like a do not disturb. You're limited, you're not able to view your apps or anything like that with school mode enabled. Now this ear icon, if you have headphones on, this will actually monitor the decibel levels right here, which is quite neat. So that's what the ear icon does. And then this little icon right here, this is basically your walkie talkie. If you launch the walkie talkie app on your Apple Watch, you can send an invitation to another user who has an Apple Watch where you can both communicate with each other anytime during the day, like a walkie talkie. And if you keep scrolling down, these little A icons, this allows you to quickly have access to the text size adjuster. So if there's an app that you're having a hard time reading the text, you can always just go here and increase the size. Now this little bell icon with the audio is when well, you're listening to music with your AirPods or something, that's a fine example. When this is enabled, it will be red, it will look like this. Siri will actually read out loud your messages to the AirPods that you're listening to. So that's what that does and you can turn it off right there if that becomes annoying. And if you tap edit, this allows you to rearrange all this to your own personal preference. And then you can also delete some of these if you find some of these shortcuts unnecessary. Now with the Apple Watch SE 2, just like all, any other Apple Watch, this is on WatchOS 9, so you have access to a bunch of different watch faces to choose from, including the new ones. And if you like to rearrange them by long pressing, this gives you the freedom to rearrange it like this, and a swipe up will allow you to actually delete it. If you like to share a watch face with somebody who's asking for your setup, tap the up arrow icon, you can send them a message that will allow them to download that watch face, including the settings and colors and everything you adjusted to that individual on their Apple Watch. And then sliding in on your Apple Watch display like this, allow you to quickly switch back and forth between other watch faces. Now, some of these watch faces, they have unique features of their own. I did a whole dedicated video about this. You can go ahead and watch right there. So since there's so many of them, this will literally make this into an hour long video. So I'd much rather just make you watch that since it basically covers everything. But new this year is you do have actually the Nike watch faces. Every Apple Watch now has that so long as they're on watchOS 9. And the cool thing about the Nike edition is the Nike logo itself is a complication. Well, a shortcut to the Nike Run app, so it frees up a complication. Now, Siri on the Apple Watch is extremely advanced and has some cool tips and tricks of its own. For a fine example, if you need Siri to launch a website, you can always just request Siri to pop up by simply long pressing on digital crown what time is it in London? It's 6.48 p.m. Or wake it up by saying the phrase, How's it going? I'm happy to be here. But if you request Siri to go on like google.com, it'll actually launch WebKit. So you have a mini web browser right here. You can actually launch on demand. Now, cool tips and tricks you can do on the Apple Watch. If you launch the camera app, this will actually launch the camera app on your iPhone automatically, and you have the capability to actually use this as a viewfinder. So if you're trying to get a group fit selfie, you could just view your Apple Watch and make sure everybody's in the shot and literally take the photo right here. So with the video, you have to actually manually go and tap on it on your iPhone. But aside from that, you have all these different settings to choose from, front or rear camera, and et cetera. And if you have the uh, Velcro strap, you could technically wrap this in the back portion of your iPhone and view it, utilize the good camera on your iPhone and use the Apple Watch as the viewfinder, which is kind of interesting and creative. And then with the Velcro band, you can actually wrap it around your Apple Watch. So you can actually store it away in your pocket and use the Velcro strap to protect the display. Now in terms of apps, tips and tricks and hidden features, one of the most popular ones obviously going to be the workout app. Whenever you start a workout, you can actually bypass the timer by double tapping on the display. And then while you're doing the workout, you can actually double tap one more time on the screen and this will create separate segments. In addition to that, if you're about to start another workout, instead of ending your current workout, you can always just tap the plus icon and select the workout you would like to resume that tracker with. And then once you're done, of course, you go go down to view additional information of the workout you're doing, but you can always just tap end, and there you go. If you like to customize some of these workouts, tap the dots, and the menu is 100% customizable. You'll be surprised how much you could adjust. If you like to adjust your activity goals, like your calories and stuff like that, I like to increase it on the go on your Apple Watch, just go into the activity app, and down here, you can actually change goals right here on demand. Now, if you like to change list view from your apps, just long press, and you can switch between grid, or list view. List view is gonna make everything alphabetical order. Grid view will basically give you the grid and yes, you can actually tap edit and you can actually rearrange some of the apps as well as delete the apps as well. And on the list view, you can actually slide to delete some of these apps as well. 
And then if you go into settings and you scroll into calculator, you can actually switch the calculator percentage to be from percentage or tip percentage. So you can quickly do calculations if you're trying to split the bill over a dinner date or something. And then ask for hidden features that the Apple Watch has. In the settings, if you scroll all the way down and look for the hand washing section, you can actually enable it so when you're when you're washing your hand, the Apple Watch is smart enough to detect that and will automatically start a 20 second timer because that is the amount of time that's recommended to really kill all the harmful bacteria on your hand. And it'll send you a push notification once your 20 seconds is up. If not, it will send you a notification letting you know you were short. And then if you go in the noise section, you can actually allow your Apple Watch to constantly monitor the decibel levels around you and will notify you if you've been exposed to harmful decibel levels that's known to cause hearing damage. So this Apple Watch will basically watch over you. Then in the mindfulness app, if you're tired of seeing those reminders and stuff like that popping up, you can just disable it right here. Or if you enjoy them, you could adjust it even more. And then if you're purchasing a used Apple Watch, I highly recommend just going into the battery life section and view the battery health. This way you are 100% certain that you're getting a fair deal instead of purchasing an Apple Watch that has 20% battery life health that will only last like four hours. Now, if you go into the SOS section, here you could, this is where you can actually go ahead and enable the side button. Hold, if you actually hold the side button, this will actually get a hold of emergency dispatchers to your locations as well as your emergency contacts as it will start like a five second timer. Now, down here, if we go back, here's where you can actually go ahead and make sure you have crash detection enabled. That's pretty much self explanatory. Fall detection, same thing. You can enable it right here. So if you fall and you're unresponsive, your Apple Watch will get a hold of emergency dispatchers, of course. Medical ID, this is where you actually go ahead and actually add this if you want that to be a part of it. So whenever you hold down the power button, you have access to your medical ID slider right here. Also, another thing I should also mention in the power button section, if you actually tap this little icon right here, this is where you actually go in and actually properly turn off your Apple Watch. They move that. And when you do turn off your Apple Watch, even though the screen is black and the Apple Watch is turned off, by tapping the digital crown, it will still display you the time. Now in sound and heptics, if you scroll down where it says heptics, you have default and prominent. If you feel like your notifications, vibration and stuff like that, you're not feeling it, you can actually tap prominent and this will actually amplify the heptic feedback so you can definitely hear your not feel your notifications next time. And the digital crown heptic feedback, this is where basically when you scroll with the digital crown you feel that heptic feedback. This is where you can actually go ahead and enable that or disable that if you like. Now with cover to mute enabled, whenever you receive a notification and your device is not on silent, if you quickly cover your device and continue holding it, it'll give you a heptic feedback and your device will automatically go to silent mode without you having to go into the settings. And then for clock alarms, phone calls, a simple cover with your paw will put that device on silent. And if you tap on these little dots when receiving a phone call, you can actually send it so you can answer on your iPhone and they are left on hold until you slide to answer the call as you can see right here. And then if you like to transfer the call from your iPhone back to the Apple Watch, if you go to the phone call app on our Apple Watch, you can tap here and you can actually forward a call back from your iPhone to the Apple Watch. And then if you'd like to add some privacy to your incoming notifications, if you want it so you can actually tap on it to actually read the body of the notification like how mine is, you simply just have to go into the notification sec section in the settings on your Apple Watch and scroll down and enable tap to show full notification. Now if we actually go back and go into the clock section, here is where you can actually offset your Apple Watch separately from your iPhone. So your iPhone could be showing that time, but if you like to increase your Apple Watch to be five minutes ahead, so you can actually be five minutes ahead for your appointments and stuff, you can offset it right here. And then if you keep going down, you'll have access to Chimes. What Chimes basically does, it basically turns your Apple Watch into a grandfather clock. I, clock, I personally prefer having this enabled because I'm always in track of time. I'm never going to be late or anything like that or be off, left off guard in case I've realized like two hours has gone by. With Chimes enabled, basically every hour it will send heptic feedback to my wrist. So if it's 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, it will just give me heptic feedback. And if it's on mute, it will actually play either bells or birds. You can select these two if you like. Speak to time. With speak to time enabled, basically by taking two fingers, you tap on the display on the home screen, it will actually give you heptic feedback of the time so you can actually feel the time without actually having to look at it. 
And if you take your device off from silent and you do the same thing, Siri will verbally read out loud the time. And then as for an Easter egg, if you select either the Mickey Mouse or the Minnie Mouse watch face, they'll actually read out loud the time in their character voice. And in case you're wondering if the SE or the SE2 even have always on display, unfortunately, these two devices do not. So they don't have the always on display hardware. But if you're having a hard time viewing some of the text, you can actually make into a bold text by going into your settings, going to display and brightness and where it says bold text. This is where you can actually go in and enable that and it just makes the text easier to read. Now in the airplane mode section, you can have it so that it doesn't disable Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. So you have these preferences to choose from. And on your main device on your iPhone, if you launch the Apple Watch app and you actually select airplane mode, you could disable it right here. So in general, select airplane mode, you could disable it so it doesn't mirror your iPhone or both devices. So they could individually turn on airplane mode. Now in terms of additional apps, if you actually go into Compass, the Compass has been totally redesigned. And just like the Ultra, this has the backtrack capability. And if you like to access the backtrack capability, you can also access it right here by holding down the power button where it says compass backtrack, switch it. And here you go. You can actually set little markers and use the digital crown to zoom out so you can actually see the waypoint you have created. Now, as for messages, if you actually launch the Messenger app, there's a couple of tips and tricks that it has of its very own. One of which is you can also reply to text messages with icons. So you can reply like this, you can forward a message. You could either type with scribbles, you could use emojis. And if you type cancel and go into the app section, you have the capability to do a voice reply, GIFs, or and you tap the heart. If you hold down with one single finger, you can actually create a fireball. Or if you like to draw something, you could just do that. And you have the color wheel option right here to select between different drawings. If you long press on one of these colors, you can actually specifically get to down to a specific color you're looking for and tap done and actually save it. And if you do the same thing, but with two fingers, you tap and hold. This will actually use the heart rate sensor of your heart and you can send that to that user. And if you do the heart one more time and you just slide down, this will actually do a heart broken heart effect. Then in messages, another thing you could do is in context, if you scroll all the way in the very bottom, when you reply, you can actually send the location or use a quick reply as well as see the details of that person. Now the Apple Watch SE does not have its full keyboard like the Series 8 or the Series 7 or even the Ultra Apple Watch does. But if you actually go on the App Store, you can actually find one that will actually support this. I'll link one in the video description down below. But that's how you can actually have the keyboard ability on the Apple Watch SE 2. Now the Apple Watch does support Apple Pay. And by double tapping the digital crown, you'll have access to your cards. And you can rearrange them by long pressing and just releasing and that will be the default card. Now, one of the cons about this is that it requires a pin code to be placed on your Apple Watch to secure your cards. But there's pros to this. If we actually go on to the Apple Watch section of the app on our iPhone and you click on passcodes, you could enable it. So unlock with iPhone. So now whenever you put your Apple Watch on and you unlock your iPhone, this will bypass the code to having to be able to type in on your Apple Watch. So you will easily have access to your device just like that. And then you could do the exact same thing on your Apple Watch. If you want your Apple Watch to unlock your iPhone. To do this, go into your main iPhone settings and go into Face ID and passcode into your password to get logged in and scroll down, locate your Apple Watch, enable it. So now your Apple Watch can unlock your iPhone. And if somebody unlocks it on accident, you have the capability to overwrite this. You can do the exact same thing on your Mac computer as well as you can actually allow it so your Apple Watch can unlock your computer. And then for your emergency SOS contacts, if you actually go into emergency SOS on your iPhone and underneath here where it says set up emergency contacts and health, just click on here and it'll walk you through the entire procedure. Now back in the Apple Watch setting on our iPhone, if you're tired of always constantly accidentally tapping the power button and digital crown to take a screenshot, you want to disable it, you can disable it right here. Then in addition to that, if you have nightstand mode enabled, whenever you dock your device, you can actually tap the little percentage right here and this will actually show you the exact percentage of the current battery life stats of your Apple Watch. And then on the home page widget, if you actually long press and select this one, this will actually allow you to monitor your Apple Watch battery life percentage on your lock screen on your iPhone. 
Then the Apple Watch does have 32 gigabytes of internal storage that you do have access to to store your playlist. To do this on the Apple App Watch app on your iPhone, scroll down to music and here just tap on add music. And you can select whatever playlist or gender or whatever category you like and just add by tapping the little plus arrow icon it'll automatically synchronize and this applies for podcasts and even some third-party music streaming apps now support this so check on the app select it and see if it supports it and then if you happen to have apple tv you can actually control it on the apple watch by either launching the remote app or even the now playing section now has the capability to basically control everything on your apple watch without using the apple tv remote Okay, I lied. That wasn't the last thing, but the next one is a cool tip. So if you find yourself constantly bumping into the digital crown, either with your wrists or you just bump into walls, you can actually switch the orientation of the digital crown to be on the other side. So back on our Apple Watch, go into settings, go into general, and then orientation. And here is where you can actually select the digital crown to be on the left side or right and tap on it and just swap the band to fit perfectly. And that's how you can actually go ahead and do that. And before I end the video, another thing I want to quickly talk about is since we don't have always on display on the SE or the SE2, you can extend the duration of the display from turning it off. So to do this, just go back into display and brightness, scroll down to where it says wait duration. You can select the maximum, which is 70 seconds. And just like that, now you know everything, all the ins and outs of your brand new Apple Watch SE 2. So hopefully this video was informative. I hope you learned something new as I basically covered everything that there is to know about the Apple Watch SE 2, as well as all the unique features that it has to offer and some personal tips and tricks of that, that I use for my own day to day that hopefully should benefit you. So you could really use that device to its full potential. Aside from that, since you made it this far to the end of the video, highly appreciate it if you can actually leave this video a like, it does help me out a lot, and get subscribed, especially if you enjoy a lot of tech videos just like this. Links to the sponsorship video and stuff like that will all be linked in the video description down below. Aside from that, thank you so much for watching. If you wish to watch more, check out this video over here as I go through my favorite accessories that I still use day to day on my Apple Watch. And then that video over there, that's just the video YouTube's recommending specifically for you. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. See ya.